the young man asks if, if Gabriel was deceiving Muhammad, not Gabriel, but an angel claimed to be Gabriel was deceiving Muhammad, why didn't God stop it knowing that it would become such a very big religion and deceive so many people? Is that right? Yeah, the answer is actually in Deuteronomy 13. It's the actually, answer is actually in the Bible itself. Uh, God says he'll allow false prophets to come among you. He says, and to turn your hearts or to preach a different God. It's in Deuteronomy 13. He says, I'll allow false prophets. He doesn't even say that. He says, he'll allow, not just that. He says, he'll allow false prophets to come among you, dreamers of dreams, and their dreams to come to pass. To tell you to go after other gods. In other words, he won't just allow false prophets, but he'll allow them to have a false sign and wonder. That will even come to pass, and then to preach a different God. And then he tells us why. He says, I'm doing this, or allowing this to happen, to test you to see if you love the Lord. So God allows us to be tested, and that's really uh, very important to the Lord. People, uh, we need to understand, and a lot of times people understand the important testing is, which is a different question, but it kind of lends itself to your question, is it's precious in the sight of the Lord, it says in 1 Peter chapter 1. It says the testing of our faith is precious in the sight of the Lord. And why is it precious? Because God has been deserted, and he knew it would happen, but he wants a faithful bride, amen? He wants one who, those who be loyal to him. And that means something to all of us. We don't have a real, we don't have, life is sad if you don't know anybody that's a loyal person, right? I mean, you can't even have a relationship. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement, amen? God wants a bride, and he's coming back for a glorious bride without uh, uh, spot or wrinkle, amen? And he's coming back for a bride that's gonna be tried and true, and he allows us to be tested. He allows these false prophets that do these false signs and wonders to see even the elect to test us to see whether we truly want him or not. Because in the end, he's gonna go into, he's going to go into his eternal kingdom with those, when he comes back, Revelation 17, 11, you know who he comes back uh, with? It says, those who are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. Amen? So that, that I believe, is the answer. He's, he wants a faithful bride, and we're all being tested. And, uh, and also, well, how come more people are deceived in this area of the world than the other? Well, it says in Acts 17 that God creates the habitations and the places that we'll live and the times in which we'll live. He appoints them. He specifically puts us in certain places. He knows who will cry out to him and who won't. And he puts us in these certain places that says that we would grope after him and seek him and find him and that he's not far from each and every one of us. So your very life, you were stationed in a certain place based on God's providence and wisdom and knowing whether or not you would respond to him. So I don't want to get too deep and start getting into uh, questions of predestination and what have you. I happen to believe that, that we have choice and that God also knows the choices that we'll make and he predestines us on the basis of whether or not we'll respond to the gospel, which is probably in keeping with what this fellowship believes as well. Uh, very good question though. Deuteronomy 13, read that. That's a powerful passage that actually answers that more succinctly than I just did.